the city now is sending all these uh, shutoff notices for um, people's water, uh, saying you have, I mean, maybe a week to pay your bill uh, or, you, have, you know, you're evicted. Well, it's diabolical because we've never once stopped being charged for water, toxic water that we cannot use, toxic water that has corroded um, the pipes in people's homes. Anybody that can withstand the forces that have been up against these people over the past three years and still be standing, they deserve an award. So uh, this one we've seen, it's basically like white splotches. Can we see this one again? <laughs> After we got out the tub, her hands were still wet and she rubbed her face. Her face had actually whipped up. And then it just left that mark. So like, that was from she, her hand. Uh, that stuff that was right here, the stuff right here mm -hmm. was all over her face. I found out I was pregnant in 2015, and I started having complications from the day that I found out that I was pregnant. Um, I stayed going back and forth to the emergency room, stayed with complications, and so I thought the second baby would be my miracle baby and that baby would make it, but two months and a week into my second trimester, I ended up losing the second baby. I actually, at home, I've got a piece of a drain trap and the bottom is completely rotten out of it. And that's a seven-year-old seven piece of pipe and it shouldn't have corroded like that, but it did due to the fact that our water wasn't properly treated with anti-corrosion control. Uh, it will be my 10th time to Flint, Michigan to cover the ongoing water uh, crisis. Again, it is a crisis. Weeks ago, the state announced it would end bottled water distribution because the city's water is safe to drink. But the county health department is saying not so fast. The Genesee County Health Department is warning residents to keep using filters and bottled water. So I will be back in Flint, Michigan uh, at the beginning of the week. You know, I put my everything into this story. It's probably the most important um, story that I've ever done. You're not supposed to run your water before you test. When you run the water for several minutes before you test, that that um, basically eliminates most of the lead and you get a lower lead reading because you've run the water. When the water crisis is over and somebody stands up and says, hey, the water crisis is over, will anybody believe it? No. 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 I know you can play games with whether or not you allow water to run before you test it or how long you let it run, things like that. I don't trust the city of Flint, the governor, any of them. I'm all broke out. I'm all broke out. I have, I have picked my own pictures. I'm all broke out. I'm diabetic. I have, look it, I have like whips. And I, this is from the water. It's just breaking out and stuff like that. My teeth. Yeah, so. And I've had pneumonia. I see it, and I hear. Go ahead, get it. So the residents here are discouraged. Here we could have gotten a major decision in the Flint water crisis and uh, and the death. What's going on? What do you think is happening here? Well, I don't think it's right that we have to, after all of this went down, that we have to pay a water bill. And, you know, it's not our responsibility. And, uh... We know where the fault lies. It's to me, it's with the mayor and the governor. So, all if that's what's going on in the city, and y'all is finding this out, I would like to know more about it myself. Speak on justice for Flint, because all of the charges have been dropped. We're up against the statute of limitations. Go for it. So. What's fun is that when you have a governor and an attorney general who campaign on justice for Flint, promise to open the water pod so we can have people have access to clean, safe water because it's not that way yet, and it won't be until all the pipes are replaced. Um, then to turn around after you get elected, you know, to stand next to us and use us and text us and talk to us and ask for our help and ask for us to stand with you, then to turn around, no longer speak to you, and then say, no more funding for Flint. 
Uh, folks, I don't want to declare it too soon, but ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Now, the good news is I have a massive, massive story of corruption. Were there other things that you discovered in the course of uh, all of these interviews? I want uh, Flint residents listening uh, to imagine mission accomplished. George W. Bush, you know, landing in his fighter pilot with his commando suit and declaring, you know, we've won. So basically what's happened here is the lines were, this is what you found for talking to residents, that the lines were being flushed before the tests were being conducted. If you're testing for lead and copper and you're trying to meet EPA regulations, you have to totally not use your water for at least six hours. This is incredible. So you you initially broke the, this piece in, uh, in Vice, um, and then you also had a second uh, piece in Detroit uh, Metro Times. And I also think that a lot of times people see like Flint in a headline, and it's not that they don't care, but they don't realize that what happened in Flint is Similar things are happening all over the country. Yeah. Uh, so it's definitely a national story. Sentinel samples themselves, status quo repeatedly asked the EPA if the agency had been aware of state officials were improperly entering, entering homes of residents on the Sentinel program and collecting samples. The agency didn't respond. Yeah, six and a half years. Jesus. I actually tweeted today, six and a half years, they don't have clean water. Nobody has been sent to prison. Nobody's even faced a jury trial. Um, it is completely unfathomable. We had disagreed with that decision and made it very clear that the water should be provided until the entire system is completely repaired. And there should be absolute integrity in the testing. I mean, I, I guess I take issue uh, with your, your point about nobody ever speaking up about it. But you haven't, sir. I mean, you, you haven't publicly said anything. This has been in your office since November. I don't, I don't think that's the case. I appreciate you. What, what, when did you? What do you mean? I've been going back and forth with your office. They, they say you had reached out to MDEQ about it, but you haven't publicly said anything. Uh, you know, and Snyder's charges are a lot more tame uh, than they should be. I mean, they're just getting him for willful no neglect. Jordan, break down the latest charges. Um, as I understand it, these are not like the full accounting of justice that still needs to be done and put it in the context of the full investigation regarding Flint. Yeah, so for those that don't know, there was actually two separate investigations. One was started in 2016 by a special prosecutor, kind of like the Robert Mueller, I guess, of Flint. Um, that was an outside independent counsel. His team uh, went to 2019, and then two, in 2019, current Attorney General Dana Nessel uh, dismissed, fired that whole team, and started the investigation new. Uh, and we found what they found, which was uh, an avalanche of phone calls between Governor Snyder, his chief of staff, as well as his health director. Yeah, it's pretty impressive that basically it sounds like he forgot to send in, like, um, put a cover sheet on his TPS report. It was, uh, I was saying, you know, like, when you and I talked the other day, um, that I was, you know, I, I couldn't let myself get excited because of the fact that I knew that it would most likely be something like jaywalking tickets. Uh, I actually, somebody had told me that um, speeding fines are actually more than what he's getting levied. And um, that basically it was going to be a, well, I went from saying a slap on the wrist to a tap because a slap would actually sting. So um, I read both of the stories. You just broke two articles, basically. And the way that I read all of this was it felt like a mafia movie. Like you see genuine, like organized crime. You see payoffs. You know, um, this is really uh, it's not necessarily anything that's surprising, but the revelations nonetheless are still really shocking. I mean, to me, it was clear that Rick Snyder was a criminal. He was criminally neg negligent, you know, at a minimum. 
but now it's clear that th this goes really deeper than that. Um, just to go over a couple of the facts here, and we'll link to the articles down below. So he tried to get the mayor of Flint, Michigan, Karen Weaver, to quote unquote have uh, uh, Elijah Cummins back off. It, from a legal standpoint, can anything be done with the information that was gathered during the initial investigation? I mean, well, first of all, I think it's important to say, I know for a fact um, that the current investigation that charged the governor with a misdemeanor has all of the information I reported. So they have it. They know about these phone calls. These phone calls were basically a smoking gun. I mean, they're not on the phone, bang, 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 for two days talking about the weather. Does that make the state liable? What does that mean? What could, like, you know, you know uh, based upon this reporting, what could happen? Yeah, so we, we, we found evidence that previous prosecutors, they've been fired since by the current attorney general, were building a case against Snyder. They actually secretly uh, brought in his chief of staff for uh, a confidential subpoena. He, they brought in his treasurer for a confidential interview. They brought in his top advisor, uh, Richard Baird, who was known kind of as Snyder's right-hand man. They've convinced, I think, a lot of pe people who are maybe listening to us right now are going, why are you guys talking about this? I thought, I mean, I get why, okay, yeah, the governor, you know, was arraigned, arrested, you know, this week, but, but, but hey, it's it got fixed a couple years ago. Th that's not the case, is it, Jordan? They literally cooked the data. For, yeah. From 2016 to 20, at least 2018, Governor Whitmer, when she came in, she actually acknowledged that the testing was done wrong. So frankly, I mean, I don't want to give any, uh, you know, fear to anyone, but I don't think there's any declarative way to declare this water safe today because the testing was compromised. Erin Brockovich, she saw what I had and she called it a crime. She said the testing needs to be invalidated and redone by an independent agency. Uh, that was never done. So this is still, uh, you know, I, I think people have become numb to the term crisis. This is still a disaster. I mean, it, we got COVID, everybody is suffering right now, but in Flint, they got a double disaster because not only older ages are, are compromised uh, to the coronavirus, all right. ages are compromised. Jordan, thank you so much for your reporting all these years for your latest piece here on Flint, which I will have a link right here on the podcast page. Please read it and read his other work. It's it's so important.